six after. All yep. right. Okay. So uh, thanks, Steve and David. Thanks for coming in this holiday season to talk to us. And you're now unmuted. I'm trying to unmute you. Can you hear me now? Hello. Got you. Got you, David. How are you? I'm doing well. How How are you doing? Good. Are you a paranoid? Are you a paranoid bull? I am a paranoid bull. I am. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm very much a paranoid bull, and okay. um, you know it's great to great to kind of be back on. Um, you want to you know, share your? A, uh, interesting... you want to share your screen, or you want me to be showing? You know, you? Um, you know, maybe maybe you should show just because of the the, the screen I have right now um, might be tricky to get uh, on. Okay. Um, there are a couple things that. Um, okay, that here are the you know, I was looking at this morning that. You know, I think that a couple of things that might be interesting to look at, um, you know, let's just kind of like, you know, the background of, of this moment is everything is awesome. The background of this moment is, you know, any bear is, is wrong. The background of this moment is also the president of the United States was impeached yesterday, um, but nobody cares. Um, right. So it, it's uh, things don't you know, matter think, until they do. So, so one of the things that I think is uh, also really interesting about this moment is that we now have had a record intervention <clears throat> actually since we last spoke uh, we've had a record intervention in the bond in the credit markets funds, by the fed, fed funds overnight uh, repo market by the qe you know it, and that's that's when you start to get into that you start to get into the jargon of kind of like why it's obfuscated and why you know, folks are pretending like what, what has happened recently isn't as traumatic as it, as it is. Meaning that, you know, if we call it QE4 and we call it what it is, which is a, you know, resumption of the expansion in the Fed's balance sheet at a record rate, you know, people start to get nervous. But if you say, well, it has to do with the mechanics of the overnight funding market and it's really just swapping, you know, reserves for treasuries, you know, it kind of gives comfort. Um, but I, I want to show just two, two charts Actually, you know, three charts that I, I wish I was able to pull up on my screen. I don't know if you're able to quickly, um, but there's the um, the Austrian 50-year um, bond, which is RAGB, um, you know, three eight of, of sixty two, or even the German 30-year. Either give of me those the two. give um, me the symbol. I uh, give me the symbol for okay, the German R 30. RAG. So the 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 Austrian 50-year is RAGB three eight of sixty two. I don't know if you're able to R A G D doesn't I can't pull it up. R A G G B G is in boy. Oh boy. All right, boy. Nope. Three eighths. No. Okay, fine. Try the the um, D B R zeros of fifty. This is the German thirty year. I don't know if you're able to pull that up. Could this be it? D B R C. Let's D B R C. Uh, no, DBR is the German 50-year, um, is that it? Uh, Whatever it is, it's, uh, you know. It's no, that's not it. That's not it. Okay. Control equities. So, um, okay, the other thing you could pull up that's that's less pronounced, but it's, it shows the, the same year as the 10-year U.S. Treasury. Okay, you there's can, you a 10-year. The, the there's a 10-year. Okay. And, and just, and can you, you know, so if you look at the U.S. 10-year, and actually the reason why I brought up here it's a I, weekly. I wanted to bring up the, um, yeah. So if you look at um, that, you know, that kind of hard reversal that happened at the end of the summer in September, the, the other bonds that I mentioned, um, which is the Austrian 50 year and the German 30 year, the same is actually true for the 10 year Japanese yen and also the 30 year Japanese, uh, sorry, J the JGB. Okay, so the they're they're all um, they're JGB they're all. Can JGB. you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, because when I talk, you just keep talking over me. All right. So oh, okay, uh, go ahead. Uh, all right. So all of these uh, interest rate instruments uh, are all showing a pattern, just different degrees. And I noticed uh, when this correction in rates happened that it was the Bund just like it led when rates were going down, was leading 
with rates starting to inch up. So is that what you're talking about? Is that the foreign bonds well, I, actually are showing more uh, directional bias to higher rates than the U.S.? No. So, so the, I think what happened, backing up a step, um, and, and the reason why the Austrian 50 years is a really you know, great example of this, is actually the opposite of what you're saying, but it's the same result, meaning that there was a blow-off top uh -huh. that occurred in the overall credit markets and the global credit markets and um, the sovereign bond markets that occurred through August. And if, if what, what happened... So those loads and yields, the that's it. We can't go back to those levels. You, you're saying that was a major That's term. correct. Okay. That, I think that was the, that was the absolute. And so just to kind of put it in, in context, and, and I, I'm sorry I'm not able to share this on, on the screen, but the Austrian 50 year from January of 2019 through its top on August 27th was up 38%. Okay. The price rallied 38%. And then from the top through today, which is basically from September, where you see that reversal in mm -hmm. the 10-year U.S. Treasury, but you see it in, um, you see it in Boone's, you see it in, in yeah, um, it's more pronounced GGB's. Yeah. It's, well, it's down, it's down 12%. It, and right. so the, it's what more happened, pronounced. in my opinion, it's just, it's got a lot, you know, a lot more duration, but it, it's just a lot – you know, um, you know, the magnitude was greater, but, but, the, but that what happened was, so all of this in the, in the background, you know, was occurring in the lead up to Draghi's final hurrah, which was, you know, basically folks were front running, um, you know, the idea that there would be, you know, some, some additional intervention um, that the ECB would do in, in early September, which they did. Now, what, what happened following that, in my opinion, is that what we saw was, you know, as I was mentioning, kind of a reversal in, you know, in, in European long-dated government debt, but also European, you know, credit markets generally. The 10-year started to reverse the um, JGBs, um, not, as, not as much, but, but the... But those markets start to reverse as well. And then, really importantly, that is when the overnight, market lending, overnight lending markets froze. Meaning that what we started to see in September was a tightening of liquidity globally. Now, a lot of people talk about, you know, a you know, shortage in dollars and, and, and kind of, you know, that there's certain regulatory reasons why. Um, you know, there, there aren't people aren't able or the, the banks aren't able to provide liquidity to the overnight funding market because they need to hold certain reserves. But nothing changed regulatorily in September. Now, people, you know, some people say, well, it's in the quarter and there's some tax, yeah. you know, tax, you know, cash, you know, people need to raise, you know, cash for tax reasons. But what, what happened actually more importantly in my opinion is that you had this big reversal in the overall credit markets that started to, to, to show up and it showed up across all sovereign markets. It showed up, um, you know, in, 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 in um, corporate markets to an extent. And so what I think happened is that that, you know, that global liquidity started to reverse and that, you know, overnight, overnight money in the U S you know, which, which should be risk-free became risky and it became, um, expensive to fund. And what happened was that the Fed, I think, you know, got nervous, understandably. So they tried to, um, you know, stem the decline, um, you know, with, with, with some short term interventions that, that didn't work. And so they, they had to make those permanent. And now what we're seeing today is that, you know, things have gotten so bad that there has to be a record amount of intervention, you know, over, you know, from now through, through, um, through January, you know, hundreds of billions. Um, to, to, and even now, if you look at overnight money, um, you know, at, at kind of through the year, you know, it's still not, as of a couple of days ago, it was like three and a half percent still for, for January 
um, first, you know, from December 31st to January 1st money. So backing up a step, you know, the, the last time we spoke, um, you know, the general kind of, you know, you asked am I a paranoid bull? I, I believe the cycles matter. And I believe that, you know, that we we're kind of like past the end of, um, this, this cycle, which, which began, you know, kind of going back 2009 with, with, you know, record interventions. And I think that, that central banks have, have reached their limits. And I think that this so year, normal, your normal you know, look for cycles, as you say, every seven years matters. So because of seven to, Fed, seven to 10. So yeah, yeah. So yeah, here but, we're looking at 11. To, right. to an extent, it depends on what you see. It depends on what, it depends on what you, you make of the last two years. Meaning, I think that 2018 was a proper end to global expansion. And I think that 2019, we had a kind of a blow off top, you know, reversal in credit markets. And that S&P has sort of been, yes, it is up. Vols, vols collapsed again. Um, but S&P has sort of been an echo of that blow off top that happened in credit markets. I don't, so if you look at earnings, right, earnings are down um, in, in the S&P and global growth has actually reversed. It's actually, you know, it's been slowing. The U.S. economy has been fine. I agree with that. The business cycle actually didn't turn yet and hasn't turned. And so from a kind of, you know, a, a business cycle perspective, yes, we're, we're, in, we're into like 11 years and, and, you know, the business cycle in the United States has not turned. But if you look at China, you know, things have actually started to slow quite dramatically. Default rates in China this year are at a record level year to date in, in, their, in the Chinese bond market. And so Chinese growth is slowing. European, you know, growth is slowing on the verge of recession of right, right of comp, you know, countries, um, if not in recession, you know, and, and so I, I, I don't know that I, I, of course, if you look at the SP 500 for sure, you know, the, the, you know, the, the cycle is continued. Um, and the cycle's in the 11th year, and the cycle could go on, you know, into the 12th year. But global markets peaked in 2018. Credit markets, you know, we, we had this blow off in 2019, and it has started to reverse. Um, you know, so I do think that we are at the end of, you know, in kind of this different sort of transition period than, we, than we've had historically. Um, the thing that it makes this, this period very, very different and very bizarre is that in order to keep basic money functioning and basic overnight lending functioning, you've had to now have record intervention by the Fed, but nobody cares. And that's very, it's very bizarre. It's not something that, you know, historically, if you had this sort of intervention, you had this sort of panic in the overnight lending market, you know, you'd expect equity markets and volatility markets to react. Um, but the fact that they haven't, to me, is unusual. I think it's it's also just a sign of the level of complacency, um, you know, that exists in the markets today for all sorts of reasons. So I, so I are don't. You, uh, what's I, your I, preferred? I, what's your preferred short? Uh, equities or bonds? Bonds. So I think shorting credit today is extremely asymmetric, and the reason for that is that. You know, whether it's, you know, the reversal in, in absolute yields, which we've seen now in a pronounced way, you know, across the board, um, which, you know, kind of provides some downside from absolute levels, or you look at spreads, which have contracted quite significantly across both high yield and investment grade. You know, there's, there's really a lot of downside protection to being short credit. I think shorting, shorting equities is great, too. Um, there's really no reason not to be short equities at, at, you know, at, at record valuations and record margins and shorting equities is, you know, it's sort of somewhat easier for folks. Um, but the asymmetry right now of shorting credit is, is, is pretty unusual. Um, one, one other thing to kind of Does currency about, play into this scenario? So I think that, um, so, so if we think about gold, and you think about Bitcoin and you think about, you know, alternatives to the dollar. I think that folks, you know, um, want to believe that. And I think it's true that, you know, on, on some absolute basis, what, 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 let me just kind of to, to circle around that, to answer that, 
what, what does it mean that the Fed is now doing a record level of intervention and, you know, has agreed to monetize record deficits and whether it is a continuation of the Trump administration or, you know, his defeat by one of the Democrats, there, there's, there's kind of a, a commitment to increased fiscal deficits, not even like consistent, but increased fiscal deficits at record debt levels. In my opinion, I think what that means is that, you know, on some absolute basis, the value of, you know, the dollar um, on, on an absolute basis should, should be weakened, right? Because you're, you're having a record amount of, of money printing that now, I guess in a way, if, if we believe, you know, that the short term, like three month move in S&P and, and the three month move in, in vol and vol and kind of the sentiment that the markets don't care in a short term basis. I don't, I don't know if that's the right way to think about it, but at the very least, you know, you've got a, a popular uh, political backdrop with, you know, the, the U.S. government on both sides kind of supporting a continued money printing. Um, I think on an absolute basis, that means a dollar should weaken. Therefore, folks, you know, kind of understandably think about gold and think about Bitcoin and stuff like that. I think that the, the, the tricky thing about currencies is that, you know, if you look outside of the dollar, let's say you go to the euro, um, you know, you go to the yen, you know, the yen it, it, on a relative basis, if you think about like the limits of what folks can do, there's really, you know, the, the yen, it may be the, the, the place where the government's kind of reaching the limits of what's actually possible, meaning they own 70% of the bond market, they own 40% of the equities, right? They've got zero rates for, for you know, throughout the curve for so long and negative rates in the banking system so so long that the, the banking system's now, you know, arguably at a point of insolvency. Maybe it's like yen is, is kind of attractive versus dollar because they can't, they can't do anything else or something like that. Um, you know, Euro, I, I think that they're prob they are at their limits. I think Draghi knows that there were, there were a number of central bankers in Europe who responded to the last round of, of, of easing by Draghi saying that it was actually going too far. There's currently a case in Germany that's still outstanding for the legal challenge of, of the ECB's actions. So, so maybe in a way, you know, the, the Euro on some kind of relative basis to the dollar, you know, they can't go as far um, because of the, 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 they've reached the limits, but they, you have, you have kind of like fundamental vulnerability in the Euro to deal with like deep systemic kind of political risk issues um, given the, the general kind of, um, you know, uh, lack of stability of, the, of that union. So, so, you know, so uh, uh, outside the dollar, that, you outside the dollar, you don't know where to go. Well, I think that if you really had to, well, no one um, really has to do anything. Long, I mean, we don't even have to well, trade, that's, you know, I think that the the thing to do, like to be short, is good, right? So when you when you're short, um, you know you can kind of generate alpha in a, in a collapse, and you can generate increased value, even if the currencies are devaluing. So you can be short um, on an absolute basis, you know, all risk assets, um, and it is it preserves capital, even you know, um, even if even if we're in a scenario where the oh, currencies are devaluing. I, I do agree with the notion, and I, and I personally have some holdings in gold and Bitcoin, but I, I think that the reason why I don't start with that and I don't really end with that in any kind of pronounced way is that those, those, both of those are, are sort of uncertain and potential hedges, but, but, but it's, not, it's not clear. If we're, in, if we're in an environment, let's say that, let's say that I'm right and that actually what happened is that liquidity starts reverse very dramatically, you know, at, after the blow off top in August, the feds been in full out panic mode and what's, what's happening over, over, you know, from, from now through the January, in my opinion, seems like panic mode. If I'm right about that and, and it's, you know, it's also the case, there's still a ton of, of political risk out there and, and we're at kind of the end of the cycle from a, economic perspective, valuations are high and margins are high. And so therefore it's likely the case that there's downside, significant downside in both equities and, and credit. So let's say I'm right about all that. And let's say that, you know, for some reason there's, there's some sort of 
you know, recognition of that and, and, and markets reverse in a violent way. It, in, in those sorts of environments in the short run, gold and, and Bitcoin could get crushed in the short run. And that's because they can act like risk assets. And so the, the unfortunate thing about currencies is there's really nowhere to hide in an environment where all currencies are being debased and risk assets are at records. Meaning if, 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 we were, if we were like in a different, so let's say if markets are down 40%, risk assets are, are collapsed and currencies start to unravel at that point, I think, you know, to be long, you know, gold and Bitcoin with more conviction in that environment, you know, as a large portion of your portfolio is safer. Um, you know, I think right now having it be a part of the portfolio and it is part of mine, I think is, is, is reasonable, but you need to be thoughtful about the risk um, kind of risk. Because in a liquidity that. crisis, people will sell the kitchen sink to raise cash. That's absolutely right. Because they will act like risk assets and they, they yeah. often do typically do no aid gold did. And, you know, as we see now, Bitcoin's got a ton of volatility will continue to. So do you have any, uh, you uh, know, with your cycle work, do you have any turning points or uh, any type of time period that uh, besides this end, <laughs> so of your, it, end of your spike so, that well, Zoltan's talking about? So I actually think that, um, so in terms of seasonality, you know, a time of year sort of thing, no. I mean, to me, you know, the, the cycles are, are typically kind of seven to 10 years. Um, you know, they typically though, but I think the most important thing to pay attention to is credit markets. And that's why, you know, the, you know, whether it's looking at the European credit markets, U.S. credit markets, Japanese credit markets, I think that the key thing to pay attention to, and this actually started to, um, occur is looking at triple C's. So triple C bonds have started to sell off um, this year in the U S and oftentimes what happens whenever, sorry, whenever credit markets start to turn is that triple C's will start to move first. Um, And the reason for that is that that's the lowest rated credit. So, you know, I think that looking at both triple C's default rates, Um, credit market volatility, the credit market volatility, you know, we've seen pretty dramatically in the, in the overnight lending market. Um, but I think paying attention to, you know, um, uh, increased default rates, increased bankruptcies. We're we're starting to see some of this in, in kind of the consumer lending market. You know, if you look at default rates in, um, in both consumer credit from a, um, both, you know, uh, auto backed lending perspective and a consumer credit. Um, so, so here's the know, TLT. Credit. Let's get tactically tactical now. Um, okay. You know, it's a proxy for twenty year paper, sovereign paper. Yep. Uh, it's in a triangle. It's neutral. Uh, I guess you could say this was, you know, your blow off top right here, but this behavior right. so far doesn't seem impulsive to me it seems corrective and that we might even need one more blow off high for the you know to really declare declare a yield trough bring it back to five year bring this same picture back to a five year view and you'll see that you've had three three consecutive higher highs right okay here's a monthly Yep. Oh, okay. So, you know, and so I think that, you know, I, in my opinion, you know, kind of what we saw in 2016, if you remember back then, 2015, right 16 yeah. was, was when, you know, we started to have some credit market volatility. And then 2017 was when we had the dramatic global QE intervention that's when equity market vol collapsed right this is when the s&p 500 had a sharp ratio of over three in 2017 so if you look at the ramp into 2019 right we had a global economy sort of um you know it, it in slowdown mode throughout 2018 equity markets globally collapsing as you know in january you know at the end of the year in yeah. december um you know at the bottom that's when you had this kind of like massive reversal so I think that what happened kind of, if you look at the story of 2019, which is what you're saying kind of up to that peak, that was the, 
Well, they're going to save us again moment. Don't worry. Everything's going to be okay moment. We're going to rush into, you know, and, and it's two ways of thinking about that. One is like it's panic mode. You know, yields are collapsing because we're, we're afraid. But it's also let's hide in government paper because they're going to save us and everything's going to be okay moment. And in September, you know, at that peak, that's when, the, when, when everything reversed. That was just before the, um, you know, that kind of final, final meeting, you know, with Draghi. I think that is, I think one way of seeing this chart is that that was the, the top and the moment where the UBCB reached their limits. And then, and then very importantly, just after that, like as this started to unwind, that's when the overnight money got expensive, right? That's yeah. when the overnight money liquidity tro- kind of dried up. Meaning, you know, if, if, it's, if it's the case that, that, that governments have limits, like maybe it's true, okay, central banks have no limits. Maybe it's true the systemic risk doesn't exist. And maybe it's true that, you know, that we can hide in government money forever. That's possible, right? And if that's the case, then government bond prices can go up and up and up and up to infinity and there's no risk in them. If it's possible, which I think it is, and if it's, you know, the case, which I think it probably is, that, you know, central banks have reached their limits, it, it could be that that, you know, that was the, yeah, it was the top. And that was the, the moment when the market started to recognize, like, oh, wait, maybe there are limits. And if I could think of a place in the markets where you would expect there to be no risk, overnight U.S. risk-free money should be the risk-less, the most risk-free part of the market. And in fact, that's where it broke. Right, which is which is sort of interesting. If you think about, you know, where where might there be signs of systemic risk in the markets, or, or that, you know, that the markets, you know, that 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 risk risk free perceptions are breaking down. Well, maybe it's the S and P five hundred. I guess eventually, right? Remember in 08, like S and P went last, sort of. You know, it didn't go first. Um, but okay. To, but to me, you know. You know, and so so even tactically, I think we had three higher highs, um, you know, and, and, and arguably maybe the highest in kind of the, the blow off top in, in 2019 in, in long term rates. And the, and, the, and the other thing to keep in mind about long term money at this point is that so let's say that let's say that I'm wrong. Right. And that they, they keep it together and they, that, you know, that Bernie wins or, or Elizabeth Warren wins and they do the Green New Deal. And then they have Stacey Kelton as, as, the, as the Fed chair. You know, what do you think happens to long-term rates if, if you're printing double the amount of what's happening today? Meaning like a hyperinflationary. So there's like hyperinflationary scenarios where, you know, it's that they, they somehow keep it together, but instead they print, you know, rather than $2 trillion a year, they print four. You know, they, they start doing MMT and handing out, they take Andrew Yang's policy and they start giving people, you know, money yeah. in the streets. I think that's also, you know, um, quite, you know, bullish for long-term rates or bearish for long-term okay. paper, which is another reason that, you know, if you're short credit, you kind of get both um, exposures, both the, you know, being able to be short this, this sort of, you know, um, systemic risk, long-term debauchery of money, um, uh, and, and also fundamentals, which are weak. Okay. Well, I, I want to thank you, David, for coming here near your end with your thoughts. And this is where you could follow David at Pernite Bull. Uh, I don't think you've done much with your blog. Uh, uh, anything you want to announce that you're doing besides your own stuff? Not right now. I, I you know, I'll have some more to share, you know, sometime soon. And, um, you know, but I, I very much appreciate reconnecting. And I, you know, I also appreciate you're one of the few people who I know who openly speak about God on the internet, which I, I think is important. So keep up the, uh, the spiritual work too. You know, I think it's really important that we, oh, wow. um, you know, that we, thank you. We, we prioritize that. And I well, like, you, a, you know, a lot of people don't, way. don't care for it, but I, you know, I say I'd rather lose followers to be one. So, I love that, and I but, yeah. I, but I, I appreciate it. You have at least one person out there. Okay, who really appreciates that, that part, Merry Christmas, that part Mer- of what you do. Merry, uh, Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, David, and Happy New Year. All right, take care. And uh, right. you know, I hope that pips rain down on you in 2020, and that we're all riding 
uh, the you know Wiley Coyote trade to the bottom of the cliff, and we're on the right side with a parachute. Okay. I'm with, I'm with you, friend. Be well. All right. Okay. All right, take My care. trading warrior Bye-bye. brother, David, everyone have a great day. Remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings, and we'll wrap up the week tomorrow. So that's it, everyone. I'm ending the meeting. Adios. You're very welcome, and see you tomorrow.